Good morning and happy Sabbath. I am blessed today that I have the opportunity to speak in the church. I also want to thank the Lord that you guys are safe in a time where COVID is rampant. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied that a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and that shall be called Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. Many generations later, Mary brought forth a son, and that son's name was Jesus. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for giving us this blessed Sabbath morning. Please, Lord, as I preach your word today, help me to speak clearly and truly, and please help the audience to understand what I'm saying and please give us the Holy Spirit today. Please forgive us for our sins and help us with our daily lives and with our temptations. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Turn your Bibles to John thirteen fifteen. Say amen if you're there. And Jesus says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus has shown us many different examples on many different things. One of those examples was how to overcome sin. Way before Jesus was tempted, Jesus fasted for about 40 days. This, and this gave me a thought. What exactly is fasting? Is it just not eating food for a particular time while spending it with God? Or is it also spending time of something and replacing it with the Webster Dictionary describes fast or fasting as to abstain from food or to eat sparingly. When I read about fasting in the Bible, I found that people in the biblical times usually spend time with God instead of eating, which after looking a bit, bit deeper, I didn't find any single verse that said you shall or you should fast. So I really think people back then were showing that God was more important than a human necessity. So I believe we can spend time off something like entertainment and spend it to God. And I tried this as well, spend time off entertainment and spend it time with God. And I'm going to tell you, it is worth it. It's worth it. When I spent time off entertainment and spend it towards God, I felt this joy, this peace. You know, it made me desire God more. Though it's really difficult, it's worth it. So I recommend you try it, brother. So after 40 days of fasting, Jesus was led into the wilderness. And there, Jesus was tempted. But every single time Jesus was tempted, he used the Bible verse, as stated by Ellen White. In every temptation, the weapons of Jesus' warfare was the Word of God, the Desire of Ages, page 56. From reading, we can really see that Jesus knew his Bible. How many people here read their Bible? How many of the youth are reading their Bibles? I, even myself, have a problem with this. For whatever reasons is due to which of the youth occupies schedule. Most of it is gaming, just like me. Let us look at this research. According to Kevin Anderson on his research report that shows how much we time we spent on gaming in 2019. Hours spent playing video games per week by age group, 18 to 25 year olds, 7.7 .7 hours a week. 26 to 35 year olds, 8.21 hours per week. 36 to 45 year olds, 7.76 .7 hours per week. According to Nelson's latest total audience report, Television is still the most electronic medium for U.S. adults. Americans age 18 and older usually spend about four and a half hours a day watching TV, still beating the three hours they interact with their phones on a daily basis. Compared to reading the Bible, published research on the Bible readership in the U.S. in 2018 to 2019, published by Amy Watteson in June 25 to 2000, 2019. The graph here represents the data readership in the Bible 
in the United States in 2018 to 2019. Number of respondents were 2024 and 2018 and 2013 and 2019. Adults reading every day was 2000 in 2018 was 15% and 16 in 2019. Adults several times or four times a week, 13% in 2018 and 14% in 2019. Once a week, 9% in 2018 and stays 9% in 2019. Once a month, 6% in 2018 and 9 and 7% in 2019. Three or four times a year, 7% in 2018 and and also 8% in 2018. Less than once a year, 12% in 2018 and 10% in 2019. And it's sad to note those who never read the Bible climbed up to a high 30% in 2018 and 31% in 2019. Jesus knew, used his knowledge on the Bible and said, it is written. And every single time Satan tried to tempt him, Jesus came back with, it is written. And then the devil left him. Matthew 4, 11. By faith, Jesus overcame temptation and sin. Noah, by faith, obeyed God, yet rain was not present in his time. Yet he obeyed and built an ark. Abraham, by faith, obeyed God, though he went not knowing where he was going. And by, by faith, he dwelt in a foreign country. The disciples, although they had little faith, they slowly but surely became faithful men. Turn your Bibles to John 20 to 29. Say amen if you're there. And it says, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. There's, there's a story about a man who lost his eye in an accident. One of the best eye doctors came to see his eyes, and he said that it was not going to be, he was, they were not going to be able to bring it back. The man said, please, I believe it is God's will. If it's God's will, he will save my eye. Can we wait a few days? The doctor reluctantly agreed. While in the hospital, in great pain, the man prayed over and over, saying, Lord, your will be done. If you want me to be a pastor with one eye, I will accept that. But if it can bring honor to you, please let me keep my eye. After the surgery, the doctor told him that they didn't remove his eyes, but that it was healing. The man immediately forgot his pain and knew that God has saved his eyes and would give his eyesight back. And you know, the title of that story was By Faith I See. He believed that God would save his eyes, but he also said, Lord, your will be done. By faith he sees. Faith is to believe what you do not see. The reward of faith is to see what you believe. Faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. There's another story about sight that took, about, that took place 31 years ago. And so there was this farmer named Oyshin Hogvanek. One day he listened to a sermon that he really, really strongly disagreed with. He spent hours upon hours reading the Bible, looking at other sermons, trying to his uttermost best to disprove the man's sermon. But as doing so, he felt as if Jesus was drifting away. A year later, he reread about the story of Bartinimus, sorry if I mispronounced that, in Mark 10, 46 to 52. As he read, it struck him, he was like Bartinimus, though he had good eyesight. He was spiritually blind and needed to ask Jesus to open his eyes. As soon as he read that chapter and the story, he said, Lord, give me spiritual sight. He had only wanted to disprove the man's preachers wrong. 
After that day, the Bible became alive to him. He no longer found the people in the Bible as people living in Jesus' time, but stories that he could relate to. So the question we have to ask ourselves, including myself, is are we blind? So as I come to an end, I want to tell you one more story. So hang on there while in your whole cozy homes. Don't fall asleep because I know look, look, your couch is very, very soft. Uh, back when Alexander was conquering the Persian Empire, he met across a city that would not surrender to him. This may sound familiar to some of you. So Alexander told his men to march off a cliff into the rocks below. And the men, shocked, surrendered to Alexander. They saw that nothing would stop the eventual victory of the men who were willing to give their lives to their Lord, their, their leader. If we apply that faith to God, are we willing to give our lives to God? Are we willing to put our full trust to him? And everything. And don't worry because the Lord is with us. Go to Isaiah 58 11, and it says, Oh, say amen if you're there. And it says, The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land. He will strengthen your frame. He, you will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. There are many ways to show our faith and love to God. These are just meant some things. Fasting, not only to abstain from food, but to commune with God. We can commune with God by reading the Bible, unceasing prayers for yourself and one another. Learn, lean on spiritual things. Spend time on spiritual things. Intentional decisions. Making decisions with intentional intent. When their decision is intentional or conscious on all matters, it makes us right with God. We can be intentional on our finances. We can be intentional on our lifestyle. We can be intentional on our time spent with God. Faith, trusting that he will guide us even though things around us don't make sense. Believing that the Holy Spirit is always with you to guide you. Faith is not believing that things will work out. And I don't really need to do much except for works. We must have faith while we're doing our part, while trusting that God is with us. Faith with effort and obedience makes it all easy for God to show his power and his miracles. We also have to accept that, in, that we really need God in every single day of our lives to frame our lives in his accord. We need him to guide our decisions and our plans. We need him every day and every hour. So as I close, please allow me to share this music entitled, People Need the Lord. Let us all but be reminded that we all need God and the end of our broken dreams. And even when life gets tough, rough and tough, like in this situation we are having now, he is always there.
faithful need the Lord. Without him, we are nothing. Turn with me to John 15, 5. Say amen if you're there. I am the vines, you are the branches. He who abides in me, I and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Lord, thank you for being with us every single day and every single hour. Lord, as we go our ways, please help us with our sin and help us to be right with you, Lord. Lord, please help us with the troubles we are having and help us to be nearer to you. Help us to know about you more. And Lord, please give us the Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. And thank you for keeping us safe in the time where COVID is everywhere. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.